Once again, it's Pastor Aaron Simmons with Plant the Word Ministries. Earlier this morning, I said I would begin a series on the structure of marriage and a godly man and a godly woman and a godly uh, marriage. But let us begin with a prayer and we'll begin into the service tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, as we come to you, being submissive to your word, Father God, I ask that you push me aside being a man of clay, Father God, and allow the Spirit to move through me in a mighty way. Those that are out there, Father God, that are married now, Father God, may this be the example according to your word that they should follow. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, touching on marriage, um, we're going to begin in the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis uh chapter 2 and we're going to we're going to read from verses 18 to verses 24 to get the foundation of this sermon and then i will continue the message so if you have your bibles with you tonight uh if you if you don't mind turning with me to chapter genesis chapter 2 and we're going to begin in verse 18 and it it goes as following as the living word is written and the lord god said it is not good that man should be alone I will make him a help, a meet, a help meet for him. Stop. Now, any of y'all that read the King James Version or any of y'all that are Bible-believing Christians, this story starts from the creation. And after God made everything, he said it was good. Now, this is the first time in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, that God said it is not good that a man should be alone. So, let's continue. And out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he had, he would call them and whatever so Adam called every living cre creature that was the name thereof and Adam give name to all the cattle and, and to all the fowl of the air and every beast of the field but Adam there was not found a help meet for him so after God had created all the animals in, in the world there was still not nothing found that was a help me for Adam. But let us continue. Uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse uh, 21. Those that are joining us tonight, we are beginning a series on a godly marriage, the sanctifi sanctification of marriage, and what a godly husband and a godly wife are to do. But let us continue. Uh, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall from Adam. And he slept, and he took out of his ribs and closed up the flesh and instantly thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made woman and brought her unto the man. And God said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. One flesh. One flesh. United together. So what we are touching on tonight is the sanctif sanctification of marriage. Marriage is between man and woman. I don't care what society says. God institute marriage for man and woman the man the the woman was made for the man not the man for the woman now before y'all go throwing stones this is what the living word says now we're going to go in further detail uh, in this series of the structure of marriage but the number one role in the beginning for the wife was a help me someone to help the husband to help the man because nothing else in the world at this time other than God could help the man. So, husbands out there, remember this. You godly husbands and you single men out there that are seeking wives. Remember, she is your helpmate. She's not your child. She's your helpmate. She was taken from man's rib. Not, she won't taken from your head bone. So, so she's above you, and she won't took him from your ankle bone, so she's not below you. She is to be by your side. She is your help me. So those husbands out there that are not following according to the word of God and leading their wife according to the scripture, that's your fault. 
God's not pleased with that. And I'll tell you that right now. So continue to seek the living word and know the truth. Don't just believe hearsay when it comes to the structure of marriage and how marriage should be. Get into this living word. So the, the foundation so far on the structure of marriage is God made man and God made woman. He made the woman for the man. So marriage is an institution between a man and a woman. A man and a woman. So that's going to be the foundation that we're basing the what the living word says. Now, people say, well, Pastor, you can't say things like that. But see, this is the study Bible. So I'm going to give you what it says about marriage according to what God says. Let us read this. If you go down to your key, those that have the King James version of the Bible, it, the study Bible, it has a key where it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and they shall, shall cling unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. One flesh. Okay. God's idea for marriage is, is one woman and one man for a lifetime. God's pattern for material happiness is evidence when a man loves and leads his family with his children who obey the reverence of their parents with a wife who respects and supports her husband's leadership a mutual support and attitude must characterize both husband and wife if they are successful in building a harmonious home marriage is so important to the mind of god that it is the first of the three divine institutions that was patterned to illustrate Christ's love for the church. Christ shall therefore do their parts in, Christians shall do their parts in contributing to the success of the family. That's God's idea for marriage. This ain't no hit or miss. This is what the living word says. What the living word says. So those that are out there that doesn't know this, that not are studying this word, the enemy can't attack your marriage if you're not walking according to the scripture. If you're not walking according to the scripture, according to what the living word says. I'm going to begin to close this message tonight. I know it's short, sweet. Tomorrow we will continue on this journey as we study and understand a godly marriage. And the roles of the husband, the godly husband, and the roles of a godly wife. Also, we will identify those young men out there that are searching for a wife to what to identify as a godly woman. Those young women out there that are seeking a husband that you would know the assets and the, the characteristics of the, God, the godly husband that you were to see. But before I close this sermon, just like with every sermon, I would... I would like to send an open invitation to those that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The one that died on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. I suggest that everyone under the sound of my voice bow your head and simply repeat after me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and our transgressions, Father God. Wash us in Christ's blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Those that said that prayer, praise God. Also, those that don't have a biblical belief in God, fear, and spiritual field church, I suggest you. I, I pray that you will subscribe to Plant the Word Ministries for further understanding of the Word. And also, continue with us tomorrow night as we journey further into the Word on the structure of marriage. I encourage all those that are watching tonight to, to tune in tomorrow night for further understanding of the structure of marriage according to the way God's will had it to be. Hope everyone had a blessed Sunday, and I pray that your day, as you rise tomorrow, that you be a beacon of a beacon of light to those that are lost. May God bless you and keep you in His way.